Every day, like clockwork, it's uh, almost 10 to 1. He waits for his ride. I hear it. There he is. Bang, there he is. And every day, he's excited about where he's going. But this is all, it's all adventure. It's all adventure. The first thing you'll notice about Father Reginald Foster is what's missing. There's no frock, no black suit, and no concern for the trappings of the priesthood. My Lord delivers, look at me. <laughs> trappings? <laughs> no, no, I don't even have a collar. Instead, he wears a janitor's uniform. He's not a janitor, but he's very much in maintenance. Essentials, I say, even in class essentials. What Father Foster is trying to resuscitate this is too good. Is something that most people consider dead. Et ad experienda dona que novo seculo sunt abenda perducis. Latin. Divinitas. As in heaven's sake, this is a, a living thing. Non habet. Potestatem. What these students may not realize is that taking Latin with Father Foster is like learning painting from Picasso or music from Mozart. It's Latin. Beneath the outfit of a working man is the soul of a working man. My father was a plumber and uh, the whole family are plumbers. And the mind of a scholar. Foster spurned the family business for a higher calling, joining the priesthood. He soon discovered he excelled at one of the tools of the trade. Father Foster spoke Latin like a Roman emperor, and that talent was noticed and needed at the Vatican, where Latin remains the official language. After my first year, the Pope's Latin just fell sick. One of my teachers was working in the Vatican, and he said, I think I know the man you're looking for. Foster was in the middle of a Latin lesson when his tutor stormed in and offered him the opportunity of a lifetime. And then he came in the classroom, he said, you want to be the Pope's Latinist? And I said, certissime, certainly. For the next 40 years, every official document that came from the Vatican was either written by his hand or approved with his eyes. The funeral mass of Pope John Paul II. The mass heralding the ascension of Pope Benedict. And the document certifying Jerome Listecki as Milwaukee's Archbishop were all written by Father Foster. But a year ago, he left Rome and returned to Milwaukee Alter, terrarum orbis, to deal with a series of health problems. Now he's recovering and living near family. It was very providential, though, very, very providential. The talent that made him so valuable to four popes over 40 years could have him teaching at any university for a nice stipend. Father Foster gives it away, as they say in Latin, pro bono. Free, completely free, which is amazing. You know, you're sitting with the probably greatest Latinist in the world right now and free in Milwaukee. He won't answer to Father Foster, so the students call him Reggie. He's also been called a renegade, a maverick, and an ecclesiastical oddball. Oh, you see what turned me on? He's a member of the clergy unafraid to criticize Catholic doctrine. Half of this stuff I think is human creation and human nonsense, that's all, and it is. His anti-establishment streak hasn't gone over well with his superiors in Rome. And they said, Foster, Foster. For years, the Vatican tried to get him to toe the line. They did for a while, and then they gave up. There was never any serious discipline because, frankly, they couldn't afford to lose him. While in Rome, Foster developed an unorthodox teaching style. Those are those famous sheets. He uses a series of sheets of paper that contain excerpts from poets, politicians, and popes. Ah, look at how they're talking. Rather than using a rote textbook. So his lessons spring to life with the words of the ancients, whose spirits still seem to flutter in his classroom. We might have Augustine or Bernard or Vatican II or some encyclical or back to Cicero, Virgil, Horace, Paul. They said, look at how they talked. Foster is an affectionate but strict teacher. Read, David. Quos Caesar, Caesar. He says Latin demands discipline and dedication. He makes all of his students sign a tough contract. So I tell the students, you can take off your shoes or clothes or bring beer or wine in class. I don't care. If you make one stupid mistake, you're out. And his students in Milwaukee are smitten. I suggest we have a toast um, to our beloved teacher. And we're really grateful for your life and your 
teaching us and for your class. <laughs> Jivali. So beloved is Father Foster that his class took him out for wine, cake, and song on his 71st birthday. Felix T. B. Esto, Reginald A. Hic, hic natal is T. B. Multos anos, multo que plures. Ooh. Oh, you can hear it. And our Latin is always nice. Most nights after teaching, he returns home and opens a book. I haven't been bored for 10 seconds in 57 years. And I have to, if I feel a little bored, pull out another author, a poet, or history, Caesar, ah! He wants Latin to survive, yet he laments the long, slow death of the language, and it begs the question. If Latin is dead, which is to say it's not really spoken anywhere anymore, then why is it still important? Why is it still relevant? Relevant? Because it's, it's about three quarters of our Western civilization, for one and all of our, our thoughts and ideas, prayers, and all this other stuff has come through Latin. How do you save Latin? By teaching it well, because you have to be turned on by Latin. If you teach music well, you'll be converted to Haydn and Mozart. You'll fall in love with the thing if it's presented well. And like clockwork, he'll teach it six days a week. A priest with a passion for language that's timeless.